Hello and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin podcast. I am a woman on a mission to gather a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human motivation, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. But I am still talking about a zettel custom these days, and I have a topic that's pretty succinct for today. I'm dealing with the question of what do you do when you want to make a bib card for an article within a journal? So without further ado, I will switch to the down facing camera and I will show you exactly what I do in that case. Okay, here is the journal in question. It's called the New Resourcement. The issue is volume two, uh, volume one, number two, summer of 2024. And the articles are listed on the front of the journal. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bib card for the journal as a whole. And uh, so I'm going to include a nickname for it. This is an anthology, so I just included the title. I didn't include, try to include editor's initials. And I included the volume and the number of the issue. And then because this describes the journal as a whole, on the back side of this card, instead of including bib notes, what I will include here is the nickname and the name of the title of the article that I actually read from the journal. And I, so I've focused in on one of the articles that especially interested me. And so for this article, what I did was after having you know found it in the journal, the one that, that especially interested me, I made a card for the author and a reference to this journal article. And then if the article itself gets a nickname, just like any source would. And then besides the name, I also give the nickname of the journal that it's present in. So this is the author card pointing to the article. So then here's the first bib card. The bib card has the same nickname. It includes the title of the article and the subtitle and the author. And it also says in which journal, the nickname of the journal that it's present. Now, one of the other things that I like to always do with a bib card is include why I'm reading this particular article. In this case, I chose to read this article because of the subtitle. Can receptivity be squared with resistance? Now that's a very interesting concept for me because in my world of character traits, that receptivity would be the character trait of docility and the resistance would be the other side of docility in the in the struggle to to and from uh, docility. And so I wanted to see where that would show up, especially in this article. So I identified that as my reason. So then I began reading the article and the article was quite interesting because it gives some of the history of recent um, of upheaval theological disputes within the Catholic Church in recent times. And that was rather interesting. I haven't particularly followed that matter myself. So I picked up some notes to, you know, just to kind of give me an awareness that I was missing on that. And then as I continued, I actually reached to the area that was related to what I was interested in. And I found that on page 405. So once I had zeroed in, on the area of great interest to me, then I'm going to take a, a, an especially long bib note on it because that's the, the factor that I wanted to zero in on it. So after I had picked up on what he had to say on that issue, then the question was, am I going to continue reading the article? I can see that basically we're talking about uh, receptivity was 
as a choice and specifically as a choice of a certain given um, author. And I could tell that they weren't, the article really wasn't going to dive into the questions of docility versus resistance that I thought that it was going to. So at this point, I had satisfied the reason why I picked up the article. Beyond that, I left a bookmark in the book, um, in part because it does cover um, some recent history in the church that I have not kept up with, and I thought it might be rather interesting to to review that at some point in time. So I left a bookmark in it, but I put it down for the moment. Um, because at this point in time, having met, well, actually missed my goal for reading it, now for me, this is just going to be recreational reading. So what I would be likely to do with this card would be to say, okay, I've got a bib card going for it. So far, I did not make any main cards out of the bib card. But since I will, I may continue reading it, I would just tuck the bib cards right into the book and close it and then sit at some place where I would do light reading. You know, maybe, um, you know, at the end of breakfast while I'm sipping coffee at the kitchen table, I might pick it up and do some reading within it. But um, the main reason why I wanted to show this to you was how I handle the two-step situation where I don't just have an author and a bib card by that author, but I have another layer, which is the journal itself. So I hope that answered a question for you about how uh, to handle a situation where you have an anthology we have multiple articles within a given book. Of course, that would also work for a collection of short stories or an, um, an entry in a, an encyclopedia or anything of that nature. I like to keep track of both the overview and in the overview, I track what I've actually read from that journal and on the individual card for the article itself, each one gets its own separate bib card. That's it for today. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.